What I'm about to give you are the gross details of the story of Father Carlos. I'm going to pronounce this horribly. Yuridagoidi. I sound like such a typical white boy when I pronounce foreign names disastrously wrong. We'll just go with Carlos from now on. Uh, he's a Catholic priest. He served around the world in a bunch of different places. And he is the poster boy for everything that's exactly wrong with the culture of cover-up and deceit in the Catholic Church. So in 1999... Carlos was serving in La Regia, Argentina, where he was studying his faith, and his cohorts noticed some troubling behavior, to say the least, that he was engaged in. He made sexual advances that were inappropriate and caught the eye of the leadership of the church. So, because of his actions, he was transferred to Minnesota. Now, here's where the plot thickens. There... Another incident happened. So we're dealing with somebody here who clearly can't control himself. It, he was, while a seminarian pretended to be sleeping, okay, Carlos touched his penis. Not his own. The other person's. So he was transferred again after that incident to Pennsylvania. Now let's pause here for a second. What the fuck are you doing? And this is, unfortunately, it's become very clear from multiple different reports that this is exactly what the Catholic Church did every time there was a story about a priest who was molesting or harassing or raping. They would say, oh, okay, well, let's get ahead of the story and just ship them out to another church and then everything will be okay. You can't do that, man. You're supposed to be holy people who care about morality. You have to alert the authorities and get justice served, but they didn't do that. So he was transferred again to Pennsylvania with the warning, quote, our conclusion is that there is a dangerous pattern uh, from Father Carlos, and we feel obligated to reveal this to you. Okay, so they warned as they shipped him off. So in Pennsylvania, his actions became even more extreme. There, he teamed up with another pedophile priest, and they proceeded to indoctrinate young men into telling them secrets. And what they would do is they would give them cigars and alcohol and try to basically buy their trust, and they would share sleeping bags with them. One night, one victim whose identity is withheld said he woke up to see the priest touching his penis. He said his first instinct was to rip his head off, but quote, and this part kills me, man. I thought about it, and I might have been okay to do it, but my dad told me once a guy hit a priest and his arm was frozen forever. So, in other words, because... They're lying about how holy they are and how they have a connection with God. They've duped over these poor kids into thinking, well, I can't stop a man of God from touching my dick because then my arm might get frozen and I would be the one that's acting wrong. No, 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 no. Don't get it twisted, okay? That's a sick, disgusting lie that people tell. That, oh... I, I can't be doing anything wrong because I'm a man of God, which is why I will proceed to sexually assault you, or how many times throughout, throughout history has that same reasoning been used to murder people, whether it's the Inquisition or the Crusades or Jihad. No, I'm a holy man by definition, so now I will proceed to chop people's heads off. No, no, you're not holy. You're not holy. You're not connecting to anything, okay? You're a human being and you're acting on your evil impulses and you're masking it in this fake veil of respectability. God, that pisses me off, man, because it's an extra layer of evil. Because you're disarming anybody who might dissent and say, you know what, you're acting wrongly. You're hiding behind a veil of, no, I have God on my side. So the Diocese of Scranton, Pennsylvania, as a result of this incident, settled a lawsuit in 2004 for more than $400,000 on behalf of the priest's actions. Then... Your blood should be boiling at this point because he was shipped to Canada. Shuffle him around. He's already been to, what, three places, four places? Where they had an evaluation board. 
Uh, they looked into him and they said, quote, in the view of the credible allegation from the seminarian, his admitted practice of sleeping with boys and young men and the troubling evaluation by the South Down Institute, Father Carlos should be removed from active ministry. His facil faculties should be revoked. He should be asked to live privately. Well, as soon as they heard this, okay, and as soon as he it, news got to him that there was a criminal investigation that was underway into his sexual assaults, the priests were then shuffled to what's called the tri-border area at the junction of the borders of Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. It's uh, described as, quote, a hub for everything from drug smuggling to arms dealing to human trafficking. So they purposely went to a lawless area. And even when they got there, there were some people that looked into their backgrounds. They found out what they had done. There was a public outcry. The public tried to get in touch with law enforcement. Nothing was uh, done. Then they tried to get in contact with the Vatican. They reached out to the Pope to do something. There was no response from them. And then today, Father Carlos spends all his days doing, quote, seminars for budding young Catholics. A well-known pedophile, a well-known criminal, a well-known molester of boys, a well-known sexual assault artist is now running a cult of pedophilia and nobody's doing anything about it. Not the Catholic Church, not law enforcement, Nobody. The article actually spoke to some people who are currently doing the seminars with him, and they had uh, glowing things to say. He understands us, he gets us, he takes care of us. You know, stuff like this keeps me up at night, and I think, I wonder if he molested them just yet, or if he's waiting a little longer to gain more trust before he acts in this criminal manner. And I wonder how many of them he already molested. And I wonder how many people he will continue to molest until he dies. As the Catholic Church sits there and does absolutely nothing about it.